Hey, welcome back. This is Mike from Digital Offensive, and you're watching my path to the OSCP. Today, we're going to take a look at my progress. Uh, it's now day 10, so I am 10 days into my 90 day lab. And I uh, want to give you guys a couple of uh, quick recaps. So, this video will cover uh, day 7, 8, 9, and 10. Uh, last video I released on Christmas Day that covered uh, days 4, 5, and 6. So, at this point in the labs, I'm on. I have six boxes fully compromised and I'm currently working on my seventh box right now. Uh, if you hear the fan kicking in and catching into the audio, that's because I'm running some uh, brute force against uh, key pairs of a certain box uh, and it's taking some time. I'm trying to keep the amount of uh, uh, attempts down so I don't miss anything. Uh, hopefully from what I understand from my enumeration process and everything, uh, that is the path to go. But some uh, other information uh, along with those six machines, I've also unlocked the dev network. So uh, now I currently have IT network open, the dev network open, and of course the public network. Um, here's some notes I've taken over the last few days, uh, some tips and tricks. Um, the first one is checking for what ports are allowed outbound from hosts. So let's say you're on a host and you're trying to get your shell to come back to you and it's not working and you need a quick easy script to find out why uh, it's not open and, and this is uh, a bash script so it's not going to work on Windows but you can do something very similar on Windows as well um, by just modifying the script so what we're doing here is basically creating a for loop and we're running a sequence uh, I started at 20 so port 20 oh we have 65,000 um, of course there's more ports you can use you don't really find a lot of ports open below 20, give or take. There's some, but I figured 20 was a safe bet to start at. You can change this to whatever you want. Um, and basically for that uh, value, we're going to do a W connect, and we're going to limit the connection time out to two seconds. Uh, we don't want to be sitting there for a long period of time waiting for it to time out. So it's basically just like a quick port check. Boom, doesn't work. Move on to the next. So wait two seconds, we can probably even make that one second, but if there's any lag like there is in the OCP network, I probably would leave it at least two seconds. Uh, next uh, flag is we have our dash T, which is our timeout, uh, our, our retry flag. Um, by the default, it, re it keeps retrying. We only want to retry it once. So try it once, if failed, move to the next uh, address. And then basically we're going to provide the URL to try. So um, the URL 10.11.0.x and where x is the value of your machine or this whole value can be whatever machine you want it to be. This is basically your uh, machine that you control. And then basically um, semicolon here and then the, the dollar sign i which is the value over here. So it's going to iterate through each one of these uh, until it hits the end. And basically we paste this in and this is going to start going on. It's going to try to send wget uh, WGET commands to the IP address on that port. And what you, you want to do on your attacking machine is you want to run a TCP dump on the correct interface. So if you have multiple interfaces like you would do in Hack the Box, uh, as in the OCP, and so on, you're going to have different interfaces. So you want to make sure you're listening on the correct interface. And you're going to listen for the host that you're trying to attack. So we're waiting to hear from that host. And we want to eliminate additional noise, right? So if you're connected to that host already via port 22, let's get rid of port 22. We already know 22 is working inbound. We don't want that in our TCP dump. Let's get rid of it. Um, and we don't want the ARP because we're going to constantly see ARPs going through. And in my case, uh, port 80 because I have port 80 traffic going out to that host as well. But you can modify this flag however you want. And what's going to happen is as that starts cycling through each IP address, eventually you're going to hit an IP that's open or that's a lot outbound. Even though you're not listening, you're going to see that packet coming to your TCP dump, and then you're going to know what port it is, so you know what port you can use for outbound connectivity. Uh, this is definitely great. I would definitely throw this into your arsenal, uh, especially if you're doing those TCP labs. You may run into something where these this is needed. Or just in your general uh, testing in general, if you're on a box and you're trying to exfil data, what ports are open to exfil that data. Uh, in this case, I was able to use uh, port 53 uh, TCP outbound, which is actually kind of good. Uh, you can do some DNS exfil uh, in the real world as well, but I used it to, to send my shell back out to me. 
Uh, the next tip I have here is again a list of all the hosts on network DNS names. Um, while this is not needed, I, I found this very useful because now I kind of like have a hit list of uh, machines to go after, and like the output looks like this. Uh, you'll actually have the real IP here and the real name here. But now I can say, oh, hey, by the way, I saw something about XYZ machine. Let me try to attack that machine to see if I can get additional information or basically create a hit list of machines I want to go through. And it helps me keep track of where I'm at. Uh, for this, what we did is first you have to identify your DNS servers. Um, and you have to edit your etsyresolve.com file. Put the DNS servers of the lab above your DNS server. It's going to slow down some of your internet traffic uh, as it goes through the name servers. Um, but I can't get to work with my primary DNS server being at the top. So I have to put theirs at the top. Um, so I put theirs at the top and I run the command for I in sequence 1 through 254. So start at IP address 10, um, the lowest IP address with 1 all the way to 254. And for that, do NS lookup 10.11.1, then basically that octet filled in. And then grep out uh, can't, so anything that can't resolve, can't get a name back, we don't care about for right now, we're just going to get rid of it. And then we're going to sort it uh, in numerical order. So basically the dash V is for like uh, what they use for application version, and it chooses an IP address like an application version. So I'll group these all together uh, in numerical order from the top down. So once we have that information, we can save that into a file, and then that can become your uh, hit list. Um, the next tip I have for you guys is freaking read. Um, two boxes this week I got stuck on because I have a tendency to read the information really fast and jump to the juicy parts. If you jump to the juicy parts, you're going to miss something at the top and it's going to drive you batty. Um, I read this file probably five, six times. I kept missing the information I needed. Couldn't figure it out. Finally, I stepped back, looked at it again, and I saw it. So basically, I wasted like a day and a half because I didn't take the moment to read. I just jumped right down to the command and didn't fully understand what I was trying to attack or how I was trying to attack it. Um, the last tip for today is uh, MS Venom and creating payloads. Um, there ha happened to be a change between, I want to say, 2016, maybe 2017 timeframe and current um Metasploit and the MS Venom payloads. Um, there is certain boxes that require certain payloads of certain sizes, and this goes for outside of the lab as well. Uh, you only have so much space in your buffer that you can use, and if your payload's too big or too small, it's not going to work. So, uh, two cool tricks I found in MS Venom this week to fix this problem that I was having is the dash N flag, which basically will put NOPs into your shell code and the dash E uh, for encoder, and then dash S small. So let's say your payload is 388 bytes, and you use dash E, um, dash S smalls. It'll take your payload and shrink it down to like 362 bytes. Now, let's say you need to get to 380 bytes as your final number. You can use the dash N, and then pen the missing bytes uh, as a NOPS to get to that value. And then you'll be at 380. Uh, same goes with any other payloads. Let's say you have a payload that's 280 bytes and you need to get to 380 bytes. You can use the dash N flag by itself without the dash E and then basically increase your bytes to that value that you need to do that. So those are the hints uh, for right now. Um, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe, come back soon, uh, share this with your friends. Uh, hopefully maybe by next week I'll be able to get a little bit more back on track of daily videos. Um, and I'll give you guys any updates as I progress through this. Thanks again. Um, continue watching and share out the video. Have a good